doesn't matter at what point you start, but you just have to start. It doesn't matter how much you have in your hand, start with what you have. So I remember my first, first, first biashara. I used to run, I, before I got even a job, I used to run a video show. I was making these videos in Nigeria. Now I was cake, I was sweet, I was a soda. I was doing those things. I'm an IT graduate, but I was doing it. And from there, those things teach you discipline. Those small things you see, people ignore. They teach you discipline. And that is what I was able And until today, I value money because I sold a sweet and I know the profit of a sweet. <laughs> is um, I am a graduate BSCIT from uh, Jomo Kenyatta. I did uh, technology. I have uh, worked in various capacities in both uh, national, international, and uh, my last job. Um, I headed eight countries for a World Bank project. So my work experience is very rich. I have worked as a software developer. I have worked as a networker. I have worked as a communication specialist in Dubai, HAPA, in at Telcom Kenya, the, the former Telcom Kenya. When the dot .ke came up, uh, the dot .ke uh, because uh, the domain of dot .ke, we were the ones who were trying to sell them. That time I was interning at CCK. So first of all, I'm a very, I think I'm I'm, I'm fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> and you are now for a while uh -huh. because I have I have rich experience uh, as an, a, an somebody who is employed. And my last job was at an organization called Southwestern Indian Ocean Fisheries Project. It is here in Mombasa, but the project was moved uh, back to seashells. I could not go back there. So I stayed here. At that point, I was the IT and communication specialist head in eight countries. So it was doing databases, doing what? So it gave me a lot of experience uh, internationally um, and just interacting with a lot of people. Uh, so when that job ended, because uh, you know these World Bank contracts, they normally have a period that uh, they are given. So when the job ended in 20, in 2012, I think is when that is when my contract ended and the project was actually officially closed in 2013 because I'd already done the databases, Nikon, Nisha, Malisa, all the work. So now you're back into the job market. And uh, don't forget I was earning, my, I was being paid in dollars. I need some of money at that point. It was really need some, no taxes, nothing. You travel a lot. So you come from that to zero shillings per month. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I also got sick. So I spent almost all the money in uh, getting Medicare. When we were doing the networking, when you do networking, you have to do kuchimba chimba. You understand? Lazimo chimba chimba and your cable it embeds, India. Now, because I was not in construction, I subcontracted that job of civil works to somebody else. Then it hit me, I have uh, used so much money on this guy. But you know, when you sit somewhere and you observe, you see that, really, where have I paid this guy all this money? And this guy is just a subcontractor, but then it's just fundies who've come and done that small job. And I'm sure I could have more than at a 3,000. Very little money, a cement in this much and this. So I took a keen interest. I said, I will never pay somebody to do that job again. <laughs> I will always do it myself. So that is how Spartan Engineering was born. So and I was not an engineer. So I had to look for an engineer or later on board because you cannot get those NCA certificates without an engineer on board. So um that is how my construction journey started. That is how I transitioned from IT and got into construction. Now I could be able to do the networks and do the civil works myself. 
without having to part with the money. So after that, I came and also armed with now that LSO, I walked into offices in uh, Mombasa. I, because I had people being given jobs. I said that I mean what I mean in And at that point, I knew that the government had said 30% have to go to women. And very few women were crossing that ferry to go and look for work. So I crossed that ferry with a friend of mine and we went. And that time we were wearing our nice cut suits and heels to end up after Kazi. So the, the chief engineer looked at us, because you know, said, no, don't go. <laughs> Are you sure you want to get into this construction? We said, yes, we want to do it. Then he told us, if I give you a job, will you do it? Yes, yes, because they, they, your time, when you come and and women were not going, and, and, and youth and, 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 and uh, disabled. So there are these quotations. Can you guys do them? Yes. You know what job it was? To construct a cattle dip. I saw a cattle dip when I was in, uh, on, a, on a textbook. I've never seen a cattle dip. I didn't grow up in the village. So I said, eh, in Inoma. <laughs> so I just went and, and inquired and we were able to get somebody who could be able to do it. And we went and did in, it was in a faraway place. Germany, it was hard even going there. But we went and we did it and we aced it. I remember when the governor was opening that cattle dip. Hmm? I was, it was in a place called Mta. Mta ukundani ukundani kabisa. I remember any nilikona mwangaliev inaskia tukuli. I couldn't believe I had done that job. You understand? So that was, any my first real construction work was to do a cattle dip. Can you believe it? From there, the next, what I call, yeah, this girl can do it. Now I started bidding with the rest of the people. After that, I was able to do a classroom. I was able to do uh, a food store, uh, you know, various things until, you know, as, as time goes by, you attend those NCA seminars, you do those trainings, you learn, and you learn the hard way from the fundies. They will steal from you, they will con you, but you learn. All right. Mm. Now, for nine years in the construction journey, there uh -huh. must have been uh, challenges that, that you faced. So yeah. share with us what kind of challenges have you faced? Uh, as I've told you, when, when at the onset, my biggest challenge was that I was not an engineer. I was not uh, savvy in that uh, profession. It was something that, that I had just ventured into. And so for me, it was first of all to learn, understand, and get the ropes and understand and go to the hardwares and listen to these fundies and get conned. And you know, it was, it was just, a, 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 I've lo I lost money. And imagine at that point, you don't even have that money, but you lose money because you're trying to learn. This one will danganya, you will tell you this, will tell you this. So a fundi will give you, and will make you pay him labor higher than the cost of material, and then you know you, you just pay because you think that is the, the the real that is how it's supposed to be. So it was a land that for me the first, the onset was because I was not experienced and uh, savvy in that industry in the construction industry. I was not an engineer. That was my first challenge. Now as time went by, it became financial because now you you've learned, uh, you know you want to do it. So financial, you go to the banks. Banks cannot give you money. So at first you deal with uh, with money from you know from either your business partner and and at that point I mean Spartan Engineering is uh, my brother is a director also there so and luckily he was working so he could pump in money and me I would of course be the managing director and do all the work and um, at some point also ina kubidi unachukua gari yako unapeleka kwa hao watu wanapatia platinums unajua watu wakupatie pesa so it was at first it was financial that, that, that was one of my 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 second biggest uh, uh, problem but as time goes by i'll tell you how i overcame some of these challenges number 3 was bias people look at you like you see like when we went even to ask for the job a woman has come with heels and 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 a skirt suit. What do you, what do you mean you want to do this job? We were given the worst job. No one no one was no one does does those, does those jobs who is serious in construction. So they started us with those hard hard jobs, and so you know it was we were like we are going to do it. We are women. We are going to do it. Huh? 
So the bias, the gender bias that, uh, that women cannot do it uh, was also one of the things. And then um, as, as time has gone by, now in my like last year, actually this year, this has been my challenge. Now let me tell you my latest challenge is uh, trust, trusting people, uh, especially issues of friendships. You cannot believe after all those problems, I come to a small problem like friendships. <laughs> eh, that, 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 that has been, no, that has been my biggest problem this year. And um, it's something that I'm actually, at the moment, my biggest challenge is one of that is, one of them is that I'm going through a lot, uh, trying to, trying to work on something based on some broken trust issues among me and a, and a certain person whom we're in business with together. So basically those are the challenges that I can personally say that I have gone through in this journey. So financial, uh, with financial, my advice always to people is that uh, when you start Biashara, don't be in a hurry. You see, like most people that I started with, even when we started in that 2014, you start your biashara, you get your money, you get the money, you rush to buy a big car, you rush to do this, you rush to do this. You're in a hurry, you move out from the small house you are in. You are in a hurry to achieve or to be seen that you're achieving. And to be able to overcome some of this, because as, as when you're still small, no one will throw money on your face. No one will trust you with their money. So it, uh, it forces you to do a lot of saving. You save and then you, you build your capital, basically. You build your capital and, you, uh, and also as you build your capital, you build the, the, the confidence with the banks. You build the confidence with your creditors. So um, then if things, as, as you proceed, there's also people, there are people out here who have the money, but they don't have the time and they don't have the, the know-how, but they can be willing to be your angel investors. You understand me? They can come in, pump money, and then they, give, they live with their profit, they go with their profit and their money. There are people out here who do that. So that is how I have, uh, through the years, learned how to overcome the financial aspect. And also there's something called collaboration. You collaborate with somebody in a venture. You bring in, somebody comes with some money, you come with some money, you, you shikana, you do a, a, a job and you're able to, to do it. So that is how I have handled my financial issues. And as it is, I sleep at peace because of some of those solutions that I have, I have incorporated into my day-to-day, -day, Biashara. When it comes to bias, I just decided I will just have to put on um, brass balls. I decided Anita Kua na balls for me. Comes to my last one that I've told you, the trust and friendships. My way forward will no longer trade with anyone without an official contract. Under the sky, I will trade without contracts because uh, signed contracts are legally. That is her, that is my way forward on that one. I see me as an author. I develop myself through reading books. I read different varieties of books so that I can, I can be more knowledgeable in what content I want to share. So Lona and the construction industry. And uh, when I'm talking about personal development, I'm talking about development personally and development uh, professionally. So how do you develop yourself or how do you improve yourself personally and professionally? Okay, first of all, I'll start by telling you, Alice, that I'm the kind of person, I don't know if, I'm sure you have a friend like me who does not like reading. <laughs> so me, I'm not a bookworm. I have never been a bookworm. But I am those people who are very observant and I pay attention and uh, I learn through visuals. I am the kind of person who will, uh, I will take a drive. Like today is Saturday in the afternoon now, normally I take drives. And my drives, if I'm not from any site or anything, I'll take drives, walk around construction sites. I look at what is out there. I'll even get in 
Some I even enter places, people are being sold for apartments even at almost 50, 60 million. I'll get in there. My main reason is to see how the place looks like, to understand, to visualize. And I learn a lot from that. And I do a lot of online, uh, online searches and online, I'll do a lot of, uh, po uh, watch a lot of podcasts just to understand how some of these things are done. I take keen interest in understanding the new, the new developments out here. I'll follow those people on Instagram. I'll follow them on Facebook. I'll go to their website. I'll follow their YouTube channels. I enjoy. Like now, one of my favorite shows that I don't miss, and I watch it like today after my runs, is Jenga Najalas. You won't believe it. That is what I watch on YouTube. And the reason why I watch it is because I get to learn, OK, this is what is because I'm in Mombasa. Some of those things they mention are not here. Like the other day, I learned there is this organization called, there is this company called Italian Kitchens. I have gone to the Instagram, I've Googled, I've checked, and now I've gone deeper looking for other things that are similar. You understand? That is how I grow my knowledge base in this construction industry. And of course, uh, networking with people, interacting, that is how you get to learn because I will not go back to school to sit down and become an engineer. No. I will learn from what I see and from the experience. Okay. <laughs> sour, sour. Now, let's, let's go to something similar, closely similar to that. Now, it's <laughs> about something I call skills. These are yeah. like uh, interpersonal skills, skills mm -hmm. that we develop to help us mm -hmm. cope with life. Yeah. These are skills that have given us more strength and have taught us how to maneuver through life. Yes. So yes. what kind of skills have you yourself acquired along your mm -hmm. journey? And mm -hmm. would you like an, at the, those same skills, uh, young people need to also have them, or other people yes. need also to acquire them so that they can help themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kindly share those kind of skills that are beneficial to people, and they need to have them in their lives in order to, to, to grow in order to become better? Uh, the life skills that I, I got from my parents, which I've, read, I've incorporated them as the business skills that I'm mm -hmm. carrying forward. Uh -huh. uh, the, first, uh, the first one that I can say is that uh, uh, you have to be a very good communicator. You have to be able to communicate and communication can be verbal, can be through social media, the way you market it, the way you package everything. You have to be an excellent communicator on the products that you sell. Mm -hmm. So um, thank God I'm, I'm somebody who talks too much. So I think I can speak even more than I can sell. I maybe even maybe the same way I can sell and more than even the visuals. So uh, communication has really helped me to be able to, to sell and even to negotiate deals. Uh, the next thing that I would say, which is very, very key, and I'm very, very passionate about it, is just integrity and honesty. You have to be a very, very honest person and just uphold integrity in your business for you to be able to survive for the long, for the long haul. You can be able to lie to people, con people, do whatever you need to do, get your money now. It can go on for one year, two years, but it will never last a lifetime. You have seen how big corporates have been brought down yeah. because of lack of integrity. So it's very good to be honest. Me, I always say I would rather make my small money, but I will last forever making that small money that, than make big money. Then I come crashing down within a short period. And very many people, especially the young people, they are in a hurry to be rich. <laughs> so they will without even considering I, I can do it. Let me finish your deal. Uta kuja ni kulete ngo yangu nishone. Kesho imeraruka. Will I come back to you? No. But if I did my job slowly, nice. I tell you, no, no, no. I cannot. I cannot give. I cannot finish your job within one day. I will do it with five days. So if you want to do one day and end up working, be willing even to let go, because at the end of the day, your reputation is very key, and your reputation always comes in if people can see that you are honest and you uphold integrity. Um, the other thing that uh, drives me is my drive and resilience. I am, I have a high sense of drive. I, 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 I,
nielewe nijue nijue nitake kujua ni deep inside hiyo kujua pia nielewe and then resilience you cannot achieve anything if you do not uh, if you're not willing to be hit to go through all these things and still stand strong everything will hit you when you're in business you'll be hit with uh, disappointments you'll be hit with self doubt you'll be hit with sometimes even you wake up in the morning and you're like i'm done i'm tired at some point even you somebody may think you're depressed but the day hata kama unasikia hivyo you can take a, a break one day the next day just talk to at a to one step you keep going you keep going resilience really pays eh? and then something else is that uh, you have to be passionate about what you do you have to really love it when i look at uh, alice nyamai i have to know that alice nyamai really really loves mentors really really loves what she does and any time i look at you naona tu hiyo hata kuna kitu kingine naona naona tu hiyo that is that is that is that gives you a brand even because you're very passionate about what you do so for me i tell people just and when your passion also comes from understanding whatever you're doing you have to really understand it now you do me like what you asked me how do i build my capacity lazima ujitume ndo uielewe then another thing you have to be consistent you have to be consistent and reliable not today that i come to your shop today you are doing this i come the next day to come and look for the same thing you don't have it i will not come back again you have to really decide whatever you want even if you're changing a product let it, let it be changing a product for the better you have to be consistent and reliable hata kama hauna you have a network a pool of people that you can even refer somebody and get a get to that product and be able to supply to somebody and then you have to be very very committed for me i i i breathe i think i work which is very very unfortunate but i work 7 days a week <laughs> Uh, but i have i have my board over there i want to to do my records and do a board i have a white board there that is written this track this materials this is what has been produced this week it's give it you know it it's like a board that also gives you a vision of what you're doing so i just don't write on my notebook my normal notebook i also have a board whereby i visualize everything i do and you know that 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 sums up everything that i do in 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 a visual way because you have to visualize everything and where you're going like now in that board there is a written target of the number of cabros that we need to produce we need to produce 500,000 cabros i am at 200 and something so every time we sleep unafikiria 200 and something then najiuliza hii 200 hii ingine imebakia how many bags of cement will i need how many bags of chips will i need man force itachukua siku ngapi you understand so is record keeping and maintaining your statutory payments it will save you a lot of headache pay your statutory payments if it, if you if your taxes kama umefanya hujafanya fanya nil return because one day you will need that tax compliance and that day maybe it was the day you are supposed to get your biggest deal and you lose it and then when you are when you have those statutory documents people will people will people will uh, trust you because they are like ah ako na kampuni iko na hii iko na hii iko na hii ukiattach at a profile people see ako eh hey, this somebody even have an the government knows this person you know now the trust you earn more trust because people understand you record keeping you must know how much money is coming in you must know how much money is going out you must know how much money you're going to spend how much money you expect how many losses you're making you must know how much money you're going to set aside for yourself so that you don't squander all the business money records are very key records are very key and when i talk about records means even receipts if you're somebody like me uh, i i even my receipts for supermarket for fuel i enter them into the system of the company because i don't want to those are expenses that are for the director the call director expenses i must i must put them in so passionate about mentorship because for me i was mentored my journey has been full of mentors and i have and i am also a mentor i have my pool of mentees at every given point in my life i always make sure there's somebody i'm holding their hand 
I, I am not the kind of person, I, I like personal touches. So you will not find me uh, like uh, holding my own, because people would normally tell me, but why can't you start your own mentorship forum? You understand? People have asked me that. I do my own mentorship forum. I tell them that is not my drive. That is not something that I'm passionate about. What I do, I prefer, I come, I hold Alice's hand. I do that with people. I will hold your hand. I will help you where I can. We will walk with you this journey until nikuja nikuach. And I've done this even from, from somebody who I met to come and share biashara ya kibanda, ya kuzia nini. And I didn't know her, I just met her on Facebook. And uh, she just said she lives in Majoni where I am almost, I, I live near here. So I said, you just live here, hey, and you're suffering, hey. Hey, boo, I sent some, I sent somebody, an elder in that area, go check this lady if she's legit. And this lady right now, as I'm talking to you, anafanya kazi ya kutangza machapati na maragu ya watu wa mjengu, anatembeanga tu. That lady forgot depression. And the day somebody tagged me on Facebook, she was battling depression and wanted to go to the village, sickness, depression, and all that. So as in like, I, I really think that in this world, you really need that interpersonal touch with somebody who has gone before you and somebody who's coming behind you. Mentorship is very key. And, uh, but we have to be very genuine and honest when you're doing our mentorships. We see, do not just pick somebody and then you, because it is a continuous process. For me, I have, at the moment, I have only one mentor, a guy. This guy, I can give him even 24 hours of my day. I can sit there and just listen to him. He will tell me this, he will guide me this. I will tell him the challenge, he will see. He always sees a thing uh, because he's gone before me. He's already endured some of these things in life. And I take those lessons, put them in my, in my, in my biashara. So the next time I go to the next person who is facing the same issues, it becomes very seamless. I'm able to pay it forward and help this person. And business, in fact, I regret. When I just finished uh, campus, that's when it was the digital era in Kenya. That is when the government was buying computers. It was now up on the Osasa, what one in here, digital. And we were among the first, you know, among the first good, good, good graduates when you are in LA, is a member of IT Visuri. In fact, I remember like in our class, we were only four girls. Yeah? So I'm telling you, I remember my auntie. I always, any I look at her and I just want to cry. She came to me because she, eh, I do it, I just saw my of it. She came to me and I'm a fungo biashara. And you can't allow his mumbo that tender tender. Can I be alone now? So you put it kazi na wewe apa. You will be my technical person. Tako na fanya hizi software, na fanya hizi computers, na wausia, na wainstallia, na fanya networks and all those things. Mimi na mimi graduate. Hmm? Ati ni toke ningi tu biashara. Biashara si niya. Pata ni kibongali. I was looking at her. <laughs> you know the way the bias you're thinking business is not for them for the educated i'm telling you i regret if i got into that and that was when i was 23 now i'm 40 do the math where would i be <laughs> where would i be hmm? 17 years i'd be very far my dear hmm? extremely far now for me, at this, uh, for the last, uh, let me say three, four years, I have learned to choose something called peace. Peace is very key. When you have peace of mind, your, your whole body is able to function. Your mind is able to function very well. You are able even to give love. You are able even to live with harmony with people, but you lack peace. Even this love and unity, will know, you will never know what it means. So for me, when it comes to the three features, when it comes to now life skills, I would go for peace. But when we go the spiritual way, I would go for love because that is how God expects us to be. God wants us to love him and love one another. That is one of the greatest, that actually is the greatest commandment. But when it comes to 
tuko hapa duniani hapa hapa my friend i have done love and love can disappoint you <laughs> because you're dealing with human beings unity can disappoint you because whatever relationships or situations that give you that sense of you know that you have a belonging that you're unified with a certain unit can always fall into pieces but peace from within illuminates to the outside so for me peace mimi without even fear or favor i make money from these hands from the work of my hands period 100% and i value money i respect money <laughs> i look for money i i don't worship money but i i think that money is one of the most essential parts of uh, the general being of a person and also for biashara start biashara somebody who is in business or somebody who is just stuck out here is that uh, when it comes to biashara if you if you have if there's something you can hold on to your hand start you may not have the finances to start it with but i'm sure that each and every person god has given has put something in you that you can be able to give to somebody and they can be able to pay you for it so if you are somebody who does not have uh, money to start but you are seated there at home and you can do something small hata kama si biashara you start with you can go and offer your services somewhere and for sure you can be able to earn something you can also just go there are people who are who are selling products out here you can go and get a product and then kama watu wanaenda wanachukua wanatembea kwa streets wakiuza vitu you know there are also business people but where do they get their products they go to those who are in this wanaenda jioni wanarudisha nini wanaregesha pesa start from somewhere never pity yourself you always have to look within you what do you have in you that you can use to make money but always hata kama umeanzia chini always have that vision tell yourself because we are what we tell ourselves and you manifest what you say what you see what you think you will manifest it if you think that ai mimi akisiwezi mimi mimi sijui mimi sina pesa my friend i told you money will obey you the way you will treat it if you say i can do it i will do it it doesn't matter where i start from there is a lady that i was i was mentoring and talking to last year she had, she was down it was covid and uh, saloons were closed I, i know you remember that period so and she was working at a saloon and then at that point she had nothing but guess what hapo ndio president uhuru alileta ile kazi kwa vijana si ndio aliniambia nikamwambia mama go for it watu wanalipwa pesa ngapi 500 alienda kanza so she would go to kazi kwa vijana wanamaliza by sanane i think because she even used to send me ara kantumia picha siku moja sanane but she's a beautician by profession this is somebody in fact if, if i told even her facebook page when they say you will be shocked i'm sure even today as i'm talking to you she is at somebody's bride making them looking making them look nice but during kazi kwa vijana she used to make herself earn 500 shillings when she le- when she lives there and after to talk polish she used to hire a machine ya kukausha ile ya kukausha makucha so nikamuliza ndio alikuwa anga sasa kipata hiyo pesa ana part na pesa so i asked her okay how best can we work on this because now i'm seeing that our goal is not coming you know na bwana tumepanga goal yetu ya pale mbele so slowly by slowly this lady to get let to endelea we saw her I, we were able to I, you know i tried to see how best i can help her and now sikazi kwa vijana ilisha but she is surviving have i told her by the way i never want to see you pitting yourself i never want to see an ugly photo of you on facebook if i see i will call you and i will call you out you are a beautician you have to look beautiful you have to post photos daily of the things that you are doing i want to see you active i pushed her because i knew at that point she needed that push alikuwa ameshaarudi chini sana 
So I, and I think the last time I pushed her was last year, December. I don't even talk to her nowadays about anything. No, my job is just to like her photos. Congratulations, thank you. And you feel some sense of meaning. That's my own personal page where you can see the projects that I do. Once in a while, I'll post about them, the, the residential, the construction, the roads, because I do roads, I do, I do buildings. We do those water dams, anything that has to do with construction. And uh, at the moment also, because of him, and I'm going to a residential, first funny residential, but say to find a residential pair. We only just used to do residential repairs under Daila Fundi. Repairs, not the whole construction. Yeah, so right now I can only be found on, uh, on my Facebook or IG. Just even if you just Google Madam Fix It, it will just add a hashtag to Madam Fix It. I will pop up because I'm the Madam Fix It. <laughs>